everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. How many points did you say the Tim Rolls would lose by? Uh, once I found out Jimmy Butler was saying I'd said they were going to lose by only 15. Before that, I was saying 25. They so won by one. They won by one at mm -hmm. the button, at the, at the buzzer. We have a controversy, though. Damian Lillard, the star of the Portlands, uh, said that uh, he was walking to the uh, post-game transportation and uh, uh, his sexual uh, preference was uh, questioned by a couple of uh, fans who might have been uh -oh. overserved. Really? And a uh, and a security guard came over and tried to get the on a Monday a night. You heterosexual? Yeah. <laughs> Wait you a minute. Non-heterosexual. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I got you now. Well, it was uh, fair. It made national news. It made a. It made a ESPN today, though. That uh, shouldn't he be allowed to beat them up at that point? Yeah, I don't think they. You I know, think the game's came, over. I didn't think I, it, it came from a crowd. So he was. This was after the game when he's going to the. I think this. It seemed to me it was after the game when he was going to the. Going to the bus. Yeah, and somebody was hanging, still hanging out, and there was a crowd of people still hanging out, and. Somebody suggested that uh, he liked boys better than girls. I guess I don't know. The wild yes. play at the Ottawa's tonight. If you want to tell me Ottawa's going to win, I won't disagree. Uh, well, Ottawa's uh, not playing well. well Ottawa's either had a or the wild. Slump. Uh, well, the wild and just, the Ottawa's are at yeah, home. Yeah, wild just won five out of six before losing two straight. So the Ottawa's are at home and got to start winning. And the Ottawa's were in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, right? I don't care. So, got a third, the, the Ottawa's will win tonight. We got Spurgeon back. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have Zach back yet, but we got Spurgeon back. But uh, I, I hockey, I have a hard time making predictions. They're they're all coin flips, in my opinion. Well, so. not more so than basketball, for God's <laughs> sake. You're a hot well, goalie. Hot yeah, goalie. Yeah. Well, no, there are more coin flips than basketball is because uh, now Bassett last night. Uh, was pretty much a coin flip. Although Reavers, yes sir, we got to go back about the last month, and the Wolves have been win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Right? They haven't. You, I don't think they've had any winning streaks or schedule. losing streaks. They just now they they get beat by absolute sloths on uh, on Saturday, and then they beat a pretty good team last night. So Jamal Crawford had his first real good game in a well, while. Well, that's so. the problem I have with it. There's no there's no figure. <laughs> you want consistency. I yeah, do. but but when Cleveland plays, they're going to win. And when Golden State's healthy, they're going to win. The NBA is more predictable than the uh, NHL. Is. Cleveland at the Milwaukee tonight. Ooh, I'd like that. They'll sell that out. Oh, heaven just. Milwaukee's yeah. a fun team. Mm -hmm. They got... Uh, Sean Sweeney, you know Sean Sweeney of the of the St. Paul of the Sweeney, Sweeney the George Sweeney Sweeney, family. Sweeney, St. Paul Sweeney's uh, played at uh, St. Thomas and I think Creighton, right? Yeah. Creighton and St. Thomas. He was a St. Thomas player. Is uh, uh, Jason he's in the Kidd's? Pros? He's Jason Kidd's defensive guy. He's huh. a de he's a coach. Oh, he's a coach. Coach, yes, oh. uh, but he's a young, you know, young coach. Uh, he'll be a head coach in the NBA someday. And is that a good you. basketball market? Milwaukee, eh, when they're decent, sure. You know, when they good. had Kareem back in the day. Yeah, they uh, they got they had Kareem so long ago he was uh, Lou. Lou for a while, yeah. but uh, he didn't. Uh, they they didn't respond. Milwaukee didn't have the culture that uh, Kareem was looking for, and he he was sort of the first guy to say, "Get me out of here." Well, plus they didn't have a they had a dank building. They didn't have this. It was this. kind of a fun building, though. Well, I've been saying. in it. There was yeah. nothing fun about it. No, well, Marquette, but Marquette was playing there, and they were playing there, and they were both good. That mm -hmm. place was hopping. But I they didn't to... have the Bradley Center. No, 
No. But they are now getting rid of the Bradley Center. The Bradley Center is the new uh, being one? phased out, and the new one's coming in. I wonder yes. if they're in line for a hockey team. You know, the Bradley Center didn't have sweets. Mm-hmm. I don't think Milwaukee's in line, though. Nobody's going to. Do you see what they say they're going to charge for the next one? No. $700 million. Oh, my God. Wow. They got 500 from Vegas. They say the expansion price they want out of Seattle, which wants a team, is $700 million. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Uh, that takes a lot of guts. But, that's uh, almost NFL money. Yeah, almost, I said. Not anymore. Right. But, well, uh, NFL's what is what is the what does Jerry Richardson want? A billion? He'll get two billion. Really? Two billion? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going the price of poker. If Ziggy were to sell this team right now, he'd get over two and a half. Really? Yeah. Oh, with a brand with new, stadium new stadium, and absolutely. And, uh, Yep, he'd get over two and a half. And now, a team that sells out every home game? The trouble is, if you sell, you're probably going to get an out-of-town, you know, some L.A. or big, uh, New York guy. You're not going to, you're going to get, just like Ziggy, you're going to get some out-of-town. Isn't it amazing? Nobody in town's going to come up with that money. Isn't it amazing the way the uh, Super Bowl committee is nervous that the Vikings will advance into the playoffs because it's depriving them of time? To get the stadium ready for the Super Bowl, what do you have to get ready? What the hell I mean, do you really? have to, I, I yeah. agree. You what got do you metal have to detectors. Get ready? Once you they're got in, two weeks. By the way, I got to check you, the rafters. Yeah, change sure. the seats. Yeah, make sure nobody's hanging out in the Wait, rafters. Really quick, Pat, before you go on, this is just breaking. The Packers have officially placed Aaron Rodgers on injured reserve. Oh, that means that they won't play. They they resisted the urge to allow him to. Uh, Convince him to let him play. I huh? have a question about that. What say does he have in that? Uh, about uh, what seventy percent? Well, no, but I'm sure they. I'm sure if it was up to him, he probably would have played. But they don't want him to. I would he, think that he would not want to. Why in the hell do you want to play when well, it's twenty wants, below and you're not going to do anything? Because he's goofy. He's, <clears throat> you know, he likes to likes to win games, especially he would like to ruin things for the Vikings. So best of luck to Brett Hundley against that pass rush <laughs> on Saturday true. night. By the way, you Sean mentioned John Sweeney's thirty one. By the way, Pat, I looked it up. You mentioned the uh, Super Bowl host committee. Mm-hmm. Did you see the uh, generous compensation they've been receiving? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Minnesota Super Bowl host committee CEO Maureen Bosch mm-hmm. uh, has been paid $335,424. You've got to be kidding me. Where's Plus, that come from? Uh, the uh, host committee that has raised $50 million to... Uh, and you saps with your free jackets yeah. are going to stand there and freeze yeah. to death for nothing. Uh, 335 plus. She's already received a hundred and twenty three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar bonus. Wow. And nine thousand wow. seven hundred and seventeen in non taxable compensation for a total of four hundred and sixty eight thousand eight hundred and ninety one dollars. Wow. That ain't that, no volunteer what a job. Scam. That ain't no volunteer Number job. Number two guy, the COO, Chief Operating Officer, Dave Hasselman, has uh received uh <laughs> two hundred and seventy two thousand three hundred and thirty two plus a $55,714 bonus, plus some non-taxable compensation. What's the bonus based for on? A, I don't know. It's here. I, I don't mean, know right. what the bonus What's is. What's the bonus? You didn't. Uh, they're, they're here. here. The you're having the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, this is through uh, November. They, they haven't gotten the big bonuses yet for whatever happens at the Super Bowl. Uh, t- Hasselman's made three thirty-eight. Not the Hasselman Marshmallow. The Super Bowl <laughs> host committee is required to fire a federal 990 disclosure this is, this is just form an extraordinary listing story. revenue and expenses, including the salaries of the top officers. What I don't think, I think that this 50 mil they're raising mm-hmm. from corporations is tax deductible. By the I corporation? Think by the corporations, yes. I think the corporations are allowed to write that off in That's some just manner. That's extraordinary. Yes. Yeah, That's just I thought, extraordinary. I thought maybe she might be making 180 and he might be making 100 or something. Four. Uh, to four, do what? Is that four what we're for? Yeah, right. Organize it. Organize it. Organize, it. Organize what? <laughs> They're on autopilot. Well, you gotta, Every Super Bowl. No, you got to have you got to have a zip line. It. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the zip line. Where is the zip line going to be? You take off from Nicollet Island and crash into a flower warehouse. Okay. Across the river. Okay. And what did we learn yesterday, flower, Joe? F L O U R. And what's that going to cost you? Uh, 30 bucks of zip. And you know they all sold out. Didn't the, they? You know yeah, who wants out. to go on the zip, though? They ought to make room for him? Sid. Jim Marshall. 
Jim Marshall? Jim Marshall wants to go he's on his... He's too creaky. Zip. Yeah, I know, but he's damn near killed himself a hundred times. Yeah, he didn't, wasn't well. he doing the uh, oh. the glider? Yeah, he damn near killed himself with the glider. He shot himself by accident once. He was, the wrong way. He's normal. he was up in the... He almost died in the, in the Glacier National Park. Mm -hmm. with the guy, one guy did die, the head of the Federal Reserve in town here. And, Speaking of uh, death, did you hear that Paul Shepard died? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. You're going to miss yeah. old Paulie. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was. Uh, haven't talked to him in a while. I hadn't talked to him in a while. Was he the guy with the dude. shaky voice? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, golf, golf pro. pro. Yeah. Golf pro. Matthew Mikulski Jr.'s former golf coach. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, one lesson. Mm -hmm. Did it work? <laughs> uh, no, nah, he, he plays He plays better than I do, but yeah. he didn't really. He's not on tour. Right. Paulie's, uh, yeah. Uh, Paul, How old was Paulie? No, 92. 92, right? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah right. 92. Hmm. Tommy Mischke had released that information. Paul, I, I, that. I was trying to find I wrote a column on him 12 years ago, probably, mm -hmm. when he Did first came back then? to town. No, no, he was alive then. I went out to saw, I saw him give a lesson because he had the bad neck and he couldn't really stand there. So he'd sit in a chair in front of the right. guy and tell him what he was doing wrong, yeah. you know? That's so. what Tommy Armour did. He'd sit there. Mm -hmm. He'd have a toddy in his hands <laughs> and tell you what to do. What, what a way doing, to teach. What you were doing wrong, yeah. Paulie, you know, had the, was hung out in L.A. and Bel Air and Riviera really? and all those places for years, yeah. He was a teacher. So he was the real deal. Yeah, he was a teaching pro, a very a peach, teaching pro to the stars for oh, uh, many boy. years, yeah. Uh, Rook, take us to break, and we'll be back shortly. When's golf start again? I'm getting lonely. Well, probably um, not till January. Yeah, the uh, tournament of champions is the uh, first weekend of January, basically. We go to Hawaii for a couple. I don't know what we're calling it now. We went for we went to the Mercedes and then the Hyundai and then I I don't know what the hell we call it mm -hmm. now. Do you? No. But it's always at the same place. Beautiful Kapalua up there where the wind's blowing, looking out over the water. It's fantastic. Now you're going to depart for your Florida estate. Uh, yeah, next uh, middle of next week. Oh, you're staying I'll, home for Christmas. Yep, and then I'll be gone about three weeks, and then I'll be back for a couple of weeks of Super Bowl excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you, you <laughs> vowed that you wouldn't be here for the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, I lost. <laughs> Once again, I also vowed the Timberwolves were going to lose. So what the hell? I've, I've been known to be wrong on my vows. I'll be here for the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually coming home, I think, on the uh, 19th or something like that. So come home. Because they might be playing the NFC title game right here in beautiful, uh, right here at the beautiful, uh, uh, whatever the hell the name of that place U.S. is. U.S. Bank yeah, Stadium. U.S. Bank Stadium. The Ziggy, I call it. Mm-hmm. If Ziggy takes the zip line, I will. Oh, <laughs> let's get Ziggy on the zip line. Yep. That thing is becoming, the game is less and less a, a oh, part of the, the attraction. If as many people are coming to town as they claim. Which I find hard to that believe. That means two-thirds of them are coming here with no intentions of going to the game. Right. I would imagine Sunday morning is fairly busy at the airport of people flying out of town. I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Monday, um, the but following, maybe we should the, maybe we should get Governor Dayton and Ziggy to zip line together, yes, like when they had the shovel yeah, with the shovels yes. with the glee, with the with the, the startled look, look on their faces. Not, no, Ziggy had the. Do you know how much money I'm worth when this is done? Oh. I can. I I won't even have to rob wi widows of their of their money right, investments right. anymore. I'm, I'm going to make kick so anybody much... on the street. No, right? Oh, that's in a wheelchair. Remember yes, that guy? Yeah. His former partner. Yeah, the, the, yeah, that guy. That the, guy. Yeah, that thing's still. He still hasn't come up. Had to come up with any money on that deal. That's that'll be going through the courts for eight more years. I either heard or read that the Monday following the Super Bowl, the airport will handle 65,000 passengers. Is that plausible? Is that plausible? I don't Can know. that place I, do 65,000? I was looking minutes? at What uh, if there's an ice storm? You don't, ain't moving. Don't say things like that. Yeah, no, that's that would no. be difficult. I want it on uh, Saturday. You want an ice storm on Saturday? On Saturday. Yeah. Yes, please. Just a minute. We have a <laughs> Can we order that? Can we order that? Cindy? Yes, hello. Hi. How are you guys? Cindy, you're still hanging in there, dear. Congratulations. I am hanging in there. Yes, I am. All right, dear. We're uh, glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm still hanging in there. I have another checkup in six weeks. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm disappointed in the wolves. 
I don't blame no. you. I the am club. very disappointed. The schedule has been easy to this point. They should have more wins. Oh, they should definitely have more wins. But my question, I do not understand. When you're in a football game and you leap up in the air and maybe barely get by the pylon and it's a touchdown. Yes. Then you get into the end zone like, uh, let's see. The guy from Pittsburgh. The guy from Jesse James was his name. No, there was one, uh, the Viking from a week ago. Oh, When they called it a touchdown and he had possession of that ball for like maybe, what, three to five seconds? And then it bobbled out of bounds, and they first said touchdown, then no touchdown. Yes. They've, they've got to change some rules on these <laughs> touchdowns. They do. I, I think we should call it the Cindy campaign to get the rules changed. I, no, I think a lot of people agree? agree with you. Yes. You, you leap up in the air, and you get close to that pylon, and you're out of bounds, but it's a touchdown. No, it just it just. When you're running with the ball... All you have to do is touch your nose of the ball on the line, and it's a touchdown. If you're catching it, you basically have to adopt it. Mm-hmm. You have to take it to the orphanage and adopt it, or something. You know, it's it's yeah, uh, it, it makes no sense. It me. makes no sense. But I am very disappointed in Cat Towns is playing with no energy. What was Wiggins last night? Five for fifteen. Yeah, he and Butler have not become uh, copacetic. They, uh, the, the, if Butler's going to be the star, Wiggins has been kind of elbowed out of his way, and he don't know how to play. He doesn't know how to play with him. But I, I really do admire uh, Jimmy Butler. Is one heck of a player, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's he's pretty good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty, pretty good, but good. he's uh, he's not making the guys around him better. No, he's taking over games. See, we're playing. This is Cat's game, and then this one is. <laughs> this is how it is, game. man. Yeah, and none of them are Wiggins' game. Wiggins no. is out of the picture, and uh, that's not working for these. And boys. we're not playing team ball. No, we're playing. This is me ball today. By the way, you see who's tearing it up for the Chicago Bulls all of a sudden? Chris Dunn. Oh, really? Yes. Chris Dunn. Yes. Oh, well, good for them. Him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, no, Cindy, I you just, sound pretty good. Yes, I've had about five or six really good days in a row. Okay, and, well, hell, I mean, you're ahead of me. What am I feeling sorry for you for? <laughs> well, I don't want you to go through the stuff I've been through to no. appreciate my good days. <laughs> okay, dear, have a good okay. Christmas. All right. You too. Merry Christmas, guys. All right, All right. thank All right. you, thank you, Cindy. Dad, battling uh, bad uh, do- dose of cancer. So I well, think she was going to have to let you guys go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, she sounded clearer than she's ever seen. Yes, right. They might have fixed something. I well, don't you know. And, uh, Pat, you and her sound uh, kind of tight. Is there something going on there? <laughs> no, she's up there near you. She's I know. an Alexandria yeah, gal. Yeah. So, no. Sports Talk will return shortly. Is this Christmas music? Anyway, uh, anyway, I've got one traffic note here. It concerns uh, a big closure tomorrow morning. Inbound 394 will be shut down at 11th with no access to 4th Street excuse me, or 3rd Avenue. This is from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. tomorrow. It's for non-road-related utilities work. This is not a MnDOT project, so don't misplace your blame. What is this awful? Oh, wait, you're music? the traffic guy. Do you have any reports on Santa going already? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is there traffic on Santa's drought? He's been uh, squirrely this, all day. Is this music endorsed by the mayor? This is the Ventures, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the Ventures. It's, uh, it's the old tie season, on, Kenny. Let's about, get the spirit. What about my friend Patrick Royce, who has an equal hand in the production of this show? I believe in Christmas music starting at about oh, 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, we you. Waited until yesterday. <laughs> and, Pat, what, do we shut it down about 7 a.m. <laughs> Christmas morning? <laughs> That's enough. That's, right. That's <laughs> enough. Thank you, Royce. <laughs> <laughs> and all, they could just play Blue Christmas every year. You know that's what I think? Thing. It's a neat tradition, and I got no shot of ever experiencing mm-hmm. it. Putting the tree up on Christmas Eve. Yeah. 
No, yeah. that's never going to happen we in your home. Well, I know. Go out and saw it down and Go then put it, it up. You know, in the truckster <laughs> and bring her home and stick her okay, right there. Okay, Clark Griswold. The only time I, I ever over the went and cut one down out of one of those I things I'd like to see this. was with my brother. Who <laughs> you were stealing he did one. This. Help me. He cut one down. down. We were full of beer. <laughs> and we driven hatchet. down there. Yep. And uh, <laughs> we, we picked out perhaps the worst tree in the Minnesota. <laughs> and my brother thought it was the funniest thing. Everyone and laughed his ass off all the way home. We pulled it out of the trunk. Half the branches came off. It was, it was the worst. Was it thing. for you or your brother? It was for my, our house, oh, but my brother. But that was she was thrilled. He was that. helping me find. Oh yeah, this will be fine. Don't worry about it. He was. He wanted to. You just me. go in some woods and cut one down. No, you? we went to some tree farm. Oh, okay. Got, so you didn't steal. Where them. are the blue spruce? <laughs> See, I was picturing you pulled over on a gravel road, yeah, running into the. Deer. <laughs> no, but we got one with needles out of the size of steak knives, and you can, you know. No, no. You can, oh, that's one of them there balsams. It fell off, and people were killing the kids. Oh. Damn near killed themselves. In my in my mind's eye, he oh. Pat rolls up to the security shack there and says. Hey, do you live around here? Uh, I mean, where is the? We're looking for the Fraser fur. And the guy says those are in North Carolina. That's where those are. Oh my God! Here's John Height. Eggs, hey, Joe, sunny and 34 degrees. Wild playing tonight there in Ottawa to play the Senators. I always wanted to go there just to skate to the arena. Skate on the uh, river yep. down yep. there. Show me how. Show me that again. I didn't hear. Skate. Both of you guys skate, skate on the river. Right down there like this. Uh, take yeah, the you plane, can't take it off. Skate without doing it. Right. You gotta do it. Yeah. I am just glad. Skating. You can't say skate like this. Right, you have two yeah. runners. <laughs> You're trying to create a, uh, a vibe. Yes. Yes, yes this right is. Here. Uh, I here. am. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> The, the ice dips like this. So. And the earth was uneven. When's the last time you were on a set of blades? Me? Yeah. Oh, when I was about 12, I fell down and damn near killed myself and gave up. That's it, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wolves with the 108, 107 win over Portland last night. They'll be at Denver I tomorrow. I told you, John. <laughs> yeah, just as Patrick predicted. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Pat, really quick, back to the Christmas tree story. So when you and your brother found the, found the perfect tree, <laughs> did you... Was it being, did you drag it in the snow on the way back to the car? Because you had to have an open hand, I would assume, for the beverage. Uh, well, I'm not sure that we had to take the beers with us to cut down the tree. Well, we, we had plenty in the car. I'm also wondering... <laughs> <laughs> I'm also wondering about the saw situation. Did yeah, that's they provide a, good point. a saw? Did you bring your own? Had the saw. I, I'm I seeing a wood it. saw that you I, used to I, cut I, boards I, with, or I maybe think, even a hacksaw that I you cut steel with. I think they provided one. I think they provided I think the one. question I have that overrides all others is why in God's name would she let you go pick out the tree? I have no idea. Yeah. She was, why is this tree flat on the side we dragged it on? What is going on? <laughs> It wasn't a good tree. That one uh, goes up against the wall. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. We put it in the corner. In fact, it was just a leading tree. in the corner. A tree with three sides. <laughs> <laughs> the news notes from today, the head of the Minneapolis Police Officers Union said today that officers were heroic in shooting that man to try and stop him who was cutting his own throat with well, a knife. Well, hell, he had City an edge weapon, John. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Pat and his weapon. brother. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, yeah, I don't know what it was, it was an edge weapon. <laughs> It happened uh, yesterday in an interview room at the Minneapolis Police Department, which is inside City Hall. Police Chief Madaria Arredondo said last night the man was alone in the interview room when he pulled out the weapon and began harming himself. Officers shot him after attempting to subdue him, and the wooden man was taken, uh, wounded man, excuse me, was taken to the hospital. Union President Bob Kroll said today video of the incident will show the officers tried to de-escalate the situation before shooting. It's being investigated by the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. But John, John, wasn't he searched or something before he was brought in? Uh, well, that's what uh, the speculation would be, that they say edged weapon to alleviate the fact that they didn't search him. Because a le uh, edged weapon suggests that maybe he fashioned something while in the room, mm -hmm. quickly sharpened his uh, belt buckle. <laughs> he whittled. Oh, yeah. he'd need a knife. Did to you read that he? terrible story, John, about the guy who was, I think it was in Spain, who was killed, and he, he they found his uh, his uh, swimsuit area in a tuna can? I, oh, I, I did not. And I was How just, to get in there? Well, I, I was just thinking, that. if that ever happens to me, right. you know, what yeah. you come up with it? a bigger can. Yeah, I don't <laughs> <understand>. <laughs> 
in a rather the family size. What were they going to put found... it down in the root cellar or put it in the freezer? Or what? I don't know. Who it was them? found in an extra large tuna can. Yeah, and I, that's another thing. A tuna can? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, that's kind of small. Right. That's tiny. <laughs> Sardinia. <laughs> Mine would be in the bushes baked beans can. Right. Yeah, right. Really large family <laughs> size. Buy a Sam's oh. Club. Uh, I'm thinking more of a ham. Ham. Can of ham. Authorities in Lake County confirm a man was attacked by a bear this morning, uh, according to... Why isn't the bear sleeping? Yeah, what's he doing up? According well, apparently, they don't hibernate. Bear sleep, but I guess I'll have to wake him up then. <laughs> <laughs> according to uh, Duluth TV station... They don't that... hibernate. They go into a state. They right. don't yeah. hibernate. Mm -hmm. According to Duluth TV Maybe station... Maybe had to wake up and go potty. Maybe. Uh, you know that the uh, an inside of a bear den bread. smells good. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe cleaner than your house. Yeah, I know. yeah. maybe he's got well, a bad gross. prostate. Yeah, <laughs> had to get yeah. up and whiz. That's what I'm saying. How do you two know what the inside of a bear <laughs> oh, den smells, smells like? Wonderful. I smell fresh. In one. Oh, right? yeah. yeah, really? Yeah, the bear's no fool. <laughs> the bear said to Kenny, "You're not here for the camping." <laughs> <laughs> See the bear, I like a tick. See the bear, unlike yeah, a tick, right. yes. he evolved. evolved to the point yeah. where he said, "Let's have a nice place." Right. Yes, yeah. that's right. right. It's dandy up the cave. Yeah. Winter oh, yeah. sucks. Let's sleep all winter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, this uh, happened in the Isabella area this morning about ten forty-five. Well, that's well north of Duluth. Mm -hmm. Lake County Sheriff Kerry Johnson said two construction workers were working on a garage in the McDougal Lake area. Sure. They woke them up. I know that sleeping. area well. Mm -hmm. He said one worker noticed a large bear approaching the other worker. The bear reportedly bit one man on the arm while the other worker tried to get the bear away. The bear eventually left the scene. These guys didn't have a truck gun? What the hell? Both Lake County deputies and the DNR are looking for the bear. The worker bitten was taken to the Ely Hospital. Uh, he should well, be okay, according he's to the out. Authorities. They're out there pounding on the building. They woke him up, for God's sakes, and he was a grouchy. Uh, you know, you have to be second slowest. <laughs> Speaking of uh, odd conversations during the Sour Pat, Mike sent me this via Twitter yesterday. They, there's a monkey... That went through the Wendy's drive-through with his owner, one of those. Uh, yeah. What do you call it? The the the, the smaller pet monkeys that people have. Mm -hmm. yeah. John, you can see them. Yes. Yeah, I can see them. I they, don't know. They do like Wendy's. <laughs> the monkeys. I was right. I need a frosty. <laughs> was he in disguise too? Did he have the Groucho glasses on? With the... <laughs> oh, we were discussing evolution yesterday. Yes. Ah, you missed that. The House passed a sweeping $1.5 trillion tax bill today that slashes tax rates for corporations, provides new breaks for private businesses, and reorganizes the individual tax code. Uh, Senate is expected to follow suit as soon as tonight, and that should be sent to President Donald Trump for his signature. A debate in the Senate, though, they say could go on for up to 10 hours this evening. Hey, Johnny, does yeah. this come into effect in the 2000, the return you fill out in 19 or 18? I believe 18, 18 because the Speaker of the House addressed it today said as soon as next year, uh, households would see a uh, savings of, and then he gave it But it will not affect the taxes of 2017. Well, you're, Correct. When you're you go to in. do your taxes <clears throat> in 2018, 18. you're yep. doing them for this year. So, yes, it would affect them. Is this uh, for Wouldn't people it? who make producer money or people who make talk show host money? <laughs> who, who is this it's for? It's for everybody. It's the world. It's the greatest tax cut <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> oh. And now it I will is. drink this water with both hands. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. Uh, weird story, Mr. I don't know what that means, but that's Didn't funny. you see the Donald when he was... No. He had drinking a water? No. tiny little bottle of Dasani water or whatever. He, he kept drinking it with both hands. Oh, really? He's what? done that twice at two different... Oh, like stuff. a sippy cup. Yeah. Probably, he probably has a nice suit. He doesn't uh, want to spill it. That's right, Kenny. Thank He's you. He's got small know. hands. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what Reaver like said. Like Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> oh, don't go there, Pat. <laughs> Just ripped Trump and Teddy <laughs> in all one breath. breath. <laughs> all hands. I want to see Kenny's reaction when Rook shows him the oh, video. Yeah, I think Rook's We've got to gonna, sit through the ad here. That's so. going to have to be an off the air yeah, uh, yeah. treat for all the uh, listeners. <laughs> uh, 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 Just for Pat, cutting down the tree. I love this. In Australia, 30-year-old Cole Olsen has pleaded guilty to his involvement in a bizarre incident involving 
A supersized order at a McDonald's on Sydney, Australia's <laughs> North Shore in the wee hours of the morning earlier this month. Uh, he uh, tried to order 200 chicken nuggets <laughs> at the drive through window, only to learn at the time he was there uh, the chicken nuggets weren't on the breakfast menu. He couldn't have them. Okay. Oh, what the hell? Australia's The Telegraph reported he then drove four more times around the building Honking and yelling, I want my bleeping nuggets. I'm going to bleep you up. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, he's jonesing, huh? (laughs) Just give me a nugget. He (laughs) eventually settled settled for hash browns. I mean, they waited on this moron? They did. In fact, uh, the uh, manager personally delivered uh, to his car in the parking lot. Do you know what kind of car he was driving? And I had to look this up, uh, why he was driving one. A gremlin. Very, no, well, close. And very, a, a pacer. Very popular uh, in Oh, Aust- I know, Joe. An Avante. No, no. Levante. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Until 2016, they continued to manufacture Pontiac. Ford Falcons. Ford really? Falcons. In Australia. In he Australia? was driving a Ford Falcon. Wow. Classic. Mm. Apparently, though, he what was. A he was. Of dung that car was. Yeah, we had three Falcons when I was a oh, little kid. Didn't learn oh, your lesson. God. God. <laughs> That's the platform the Mustang was built on. Uh, yep. Blaming that on my dad. Sorry, mm-hmm. Dad. Uh, apparently, now. Well, the these, Mustang wasn't much better. Mm-hmm. Sorry to say. Apparently, these hash browns didn't satisfy him because he then asked for a full refund for 200 Big Macs and 200 large orders of fries, which, of course, he didn't get or mm. order. At, at any point, w- were the law called in? Right then, after he asked for the okay, refund, McDonald's good. employees at that point locked the doors, called the police to voice concerns for their safety. Police said they found him parked behind the wheel under the influence of alcohol, blood level 0.17. Mm-hmm. Uh, Olson, now who is reportedly attending Alcoholics Anonymous, was banned from driving for nine months and fined $1,000 when he went to court. He also told the, told the court, despite his request originally of the 200 Nuggets, that he's a vegan and has been. Ain't no <laughs> vegan, you know, except when he drinks. <laughs> made up, oh, made up to everybody like me. <laughs> One Chinese company. An Aussie, an Aussie named Olson. What the hell is that about, yeah. Kenny, man? I ate about 80 meatballs last night. <laughs> I saw your tweet. Oh, my Where God. At? I could not move at home. Were they Swedish? She, uh, no. It, Italian? It was venison with the oh. Italian sausage. Oh. And I used venison loin. I used the tenderloin okay. for these special wow. meatballs. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. So it, it, I could not stop. It couldn't have been worse if it was Chick fil A, huh? Roycey, I was in pain and I couldn't move and I was still shoveling them in <laughs> as fast as I could. So instead of eating 80 of them, you could have brought perhaps yes. old 20 or 30 in yes. for us. And, John, when I was done, I ate my whole bottle of nitro pills, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just in case, because, oh. yeah, a heart attack any second. <laughs> One Chinese company has celebrated its anniversary by forcing employees to slap each other in the face at a party. Over a dozen female workers were seen kneeling on a T-shaped runway in pairs while slapping each other rep- Repeatedly. Aren't they wacky? Is this on uh, YouTube anywhere? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. Actually, the stories are out, yes. Mm-hmm. The company told local media that the group slapping was a performance, and it's aimed at building team spirit. Oh, oh yeah. sure. It happened during an anniversary celebration of a cosmetic company in Nanchang, Xinjie province on December 17th. The company's celebrating its 14th anniversary. Mr. Lu, a spokesperson for the company, told a reporter it was nothing special, just a test for the employees... It was not simply slapping faces. It was a routine other companies are using as well to build team spirit. You can probably get away with that stuff in China, though. Huh? Oh, yeah. Maybe. I've been doing that to a rookie for years. <laughs> <I know. laughs> They're uh, coming back. There were some problems uh, once it got to social media. A lot of people complained. In fact, some said they would not buy the products from the company after watching the clip. Hmm. In case you've ever wondered about this, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Ryzansky who's recently returned from the International Space Station, said that open space smells like metal welding. I never did wonder about it. I didn't either until I, I saw I, this. Story. Well, wait, why did I he would, take his mask off? I would figure smell. it wouldn't be uh, well, odor. I thought I would think it'd be odor-free, but it's yeah, not. You are Mr. Science. Uh, mm-hmm. Are we sure it's not that old cruddy trailer they got up there <laughs> orbiting <laughs> the yeah. Earth that just stinks like burning wire? You did. I don't think you saw this story, Kenny. It was on GL a couple of weeks ago. They found a bacteria on in the outside of the International Space oh, Station. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but they Ooh. don't think it's anything serious. But that's how all bad science fiction movies start. So right. I the blob. It comes back, and then... You know there's a blob under Vermont? 
What, really? What's her oh. name? <laughs> <laughs> It's rising. Oh, wow. There's a. Uh, it's rising under is the it, surface it, of the earth. Is it a uh, big blob? It's did, a big blob. There was no what it is. is it molten? It's a hot uh, molten thing. Uh, okay. okay, Cliff. But it <laughs> might take. Say, yeah. <laughs> Sold me on that. <laughs> it's 50 million years away from uh, manifesting itself. Oh, okay. so we got, so we got time. time. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah. Well, what happens once it manifests itself? Well, Just comes say up. Say goodbye and... to Vermont. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it all falls into the molten uh, whatever. I guess. Oh, the no more syrup. The catamounts. All the ski resorts in the catamounts. Right. Go See, will that hurt your property value then? <laughs> I think so. You got blob underneath? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you got How do you turn that into cash, though? Can you tap Ooh, it good and sell point. it for power? Yeah. A baby boy. Uh, this happened uh, in Azerbaijan. Oh, sure. Was born with two... Uh, uh, wow. Units. Let's wow. say units. Really? One of them, everybody, really? Huh? Lucky. One of them was on his back. Okay. Oh, boy, that makes things interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you of know, a night at the prom, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, you could get a moment's rest. <laughs> Now, this is all believed to... <laughs> or on the wedding night. You know, there is one small detail I did not tell you. But we're going to try it out Is here. your sister busy? No! Oh! Oh! Are they going to remove it, John? Well, they already did, actually. Okay. They did right. remove it. Now, it's believed Throwing to be... Throwing the tuna can, huh? You, you've heard of... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> You've heard of the parasitic twin thing where sure. uh, a baby doesn't develop, so there's only oh, one child shame. born. That's what happened in this case. Okay. They think. They're not sure. That's oh. what they think. Uh, oh, that's actually fascinating. So yeah, he's that, in that's, there, and he stole, huh. his, he stole his twin brother. So the first uh, and only him. thing that didn't grow on the twin that didn't grow was the unit? The, the, the only thing that did grow? Did grow. I mean, did, did, did grow? Did grow, yes. Oh, that wow. grows first. Huh. Sur- <laughs> <laughs> For some. <laughs> Surgeons, as I said, removed the uh, extra one. Well, the operation for him, then. Uh, carried out at the Scientific Research Institute of Pediatrics in Baku, Azerbaijan. <laughs> the head of the institute says the baby has a normal sexual organ now where it's supposed to be. The doctor said the underdeveloped twin had attached itself onto the boy inside the womb. He's already home now with his parents, and according to doctors, no different than any other None baby. the wiser. None you know the what wiser. what he said, though? He says, let me see that other one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it protocol for me to keep this? Can I, can I ask or not? Do I have a choice? Yeah, let me look first. <laughs> and a routine oil change has turned an unusual owl sighting for one car owner. Police department in Salem, New Hampshire said a mechanic popped the hood of a car and found an eastern screech owl sitting on the engine. God, I can't see one. Here's a guy who got it in his car. Yeah, right. The department said the car owner had no idea how it got there. Police thought it was probably either seeking warmth or chasing a mouse that uh, somehow crawled into the engine. The police posted photos of the owl. They said he was very friendly. He was taken to a wildlife rehab center for evaluation. All right, Jerry. All right, Jerry. Oh, we're going to have a little uh, Timberwolves talk with Britt Robson, who's been covering them forever. And then uh, we're going to have uh, Rich Gannon talking uh, purple and uh, other good stuff. So Mackie and Judd actually had a very good conversation today about uh, who who are the M- who is the MVP of the uh, Vikings. Uh, Case there Keenum. Are a lot of candidates, and we'll uh, we'll kick that or, around ourselves. Uh, Thielen. Thielen's pretty dang. There's there those are among the names. I would but, imagine uh, there's a lot of defenders on that list too, and the Pro Bowl gets into uh, the Pro Bowl uh, nominee uh, 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 members get uh, n- uh, announced tonight. Uh, the Timberwolves, uh, the Vikings will have a whole bunch. I would think. I bet they got seven or eight of them. They still do the Pro Bowl, huh? Yeah, they still do it. Now yeah. they play it. Without the Super Bowl teams, they play it the week before the okay. Super Bowl, and if the members of the the Super Bowl guys don't go, fifteen hundred ESPN is KSTP St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's thirty four. Stay tuned for Roycey.